Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. It's a Saturday, which means it's another Excel video. And today I'm going to talk about your first 10 minutes on Excel. Now, I'm a chartered accountant. I've worked in the finance industry for 10 years. I am currently a commercial finance business partner. So I am very astute with using Excel. I use it every single day. It's the main tool that I use to analyze data, to do data modeling, to review financial information. It's a very powerful tool, but it's quite a lot to get your head around when you first start whether you're moving into auditing or a financial analyst role, you're coming straight out of university and you don't have much experience with Excel. Today, I'm basically going to break down basics of what you need to get started with Excel, and what everything is. So this is going to be your first 10 minutes using Excel, what you need to know and what sort of functionalities you can use straight out of the gate. So that's what we're going to go over in today's video. Hopefully it's useful. If you like it, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you want more Excel tips, you want career advice, you want investment support. Those are the kind of videos I make. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so first 10 minutes on Excel, here we go. So you're gonna open it up and the first thing you're gonna see is a load of columns and a load of rows. And these are the cells you use in order to input data to be able to start building up data models or reviewing information. And the way you create a simple formula is you can click on a cell and you simply do equals. And then generally speaking, you can start pulling in the cell references you need to start working out calculations. So say for instance, you had a product and you had product A, product B, and you had revenue and you have you know a hundred and a hundred all of a sudden you can start you see how you can write in different formulas into the different cells and you can start pulling in different cell references so c6 for instance plus c7 you can start manipulating data within each of the cells and that's a very simple way of initially start building up a data set within Excel. So here, for instance, you have equals, you always start with equals when you want to create a formula, you have equals C6 plus C7. So that's adding up the cell reference C6 and it's adding up the cell reference C7, which is why you've ended up with 200. Now, obviously, if you change cell C7 to 50, the auto it automatically changes the result of the formula within cell C9. Now, obviously, if you want to reduce, say, cell C6 minus C7, you put in a minus symbol, okay? And obviously, if you want to divide, you can start putting in a slash and then you have a divide there so 100 to 50 and you can start seeing how you can build up formula now a more difficult formula that you can start to use is by doing equals and then typing in the formula type so for instance if i type in equals you can do equals sum and then you can start highlighting the load of data so the sum is going to add up the two sets of data so sum in brackets and then the formula whenever you have a colon in between two cell references like cell c6 to cell c7 that means it's going to add up everything between those two cells. If I then have revenue here and it goes across and I have another 75 here and I have 75 there, the same formula can be applied going across the columns. So see here it says cell C6 colon cell D6. That's going to add up everything going across columns. An important thing to realize whenever you're using Excel is that you can fix certain columns or certain rows. So for instance here, the advantage of me adding up cell C6 to D6, so that is me adding A product. I can create another row that says adding B product, and now I can pull down using this little corner of the square by here, I can pull this reference down, and that's going to drag the formulas down. So let's take away this area here. So you can see how this area, if you click on this little uh, formula bar by here, so you click here, you can see how it's adding that grid. So you can pull, you can now pull this grid if you wanted to, and you can start adding up different cells and manipulate the data in this way. But if I pull the data down using this little square, it will pull the formula down. So now if I click here and I click here, I can now see that it's adding up 50 and 75. So the advantage here of using Excel is you can start to start building up different data models by pulling across and down grids. Another important lesson here is that you can fix cells 
and, and therefore when you pull across formulas, certain cells freeze. So let me just explain that. So say for instance you have revenue A, revenue B, revenue C, and I'm going to do 50, 50 again. Now for instance, let's say that I'm creating a variance column. So here I want to create the variance between A and B, and here I want to create the variance between A and... So one way I can create the variance between uh, variance A and variance B is you go equals and you do cell C6 minus cell D6. And another one I can create is here and I can do cell C6 minus cell E6. Okay, and it's created the variance and I can drag these boxes down like I explained before. And here you can see that I'm creating the variance I need. There's no formula here. I haven't done sum or anything. I've just gone C6, C7 minus E7. But an important thing to realize is that you can fix cells so that when you start pulling across formulas and down formulas, you can start more efficiently calculating different formulas. So the way you do this is by clicking on a cell reference and you can press F4. And if you press it once, it fixes this entire cell. And what I mean by that is now if I drag this formula across, like we discussed, you see the cell that I haven't fixed, so D6, when I'm dragging the formula across and down, it's it's dragging D6 with me. So D6 there turns into, as I drag it across, turns into E6. But you see the C6 part, because it's got dollar signs before the letter and before the number, it's fixed that cell. So everything is being compared against C6. Because I drag the formula down, you can see that C6 is being compared to D7. So here's D6, and as I drag down, it goes to D7. As I pull that formula across, you can see it says E7. So as you're pulling down, everything shifts. The formulas all shift if the formula isn't fixed. Now, I don't want to fix everything so it compares to revenue in uh, C6. I want to press F4 again and again, and you can see now it says dollar sign C6 minus D6. Now I know that I'm fixing on the column. I'm fixing on column six. I'm not fixing on the number. And what does that do? Well, if I drag across and down now, you can see that it now says C7. You see the number part of a cell isn't fixed. So as I'm dragging down, the number part changes, but the column reference doesn't change. So C6, you see nothing's happened to D7 because I haven't fixed that. Now if I pull across, you can see it says C7, E7. Now what's happened here? Well, C7 hasn't changed at all. You still have the uh, C reference of the column because that's fixed and the seven hasn't changed because I'm shifting across columns. So I haven't actually gone down a row. So between here and here, I'm still on row seven. So there you can see I'm starting to build up a formula which fixes one cell and doesn't fix another cell, which means I can start dragging across. And this is a big lesson to learn when you start using Excel, is you want to create data in column format, which allows you to be able to drag across formula. So often when you see people using Excel, they use it by creating loads of separate tables. You know, they'll have a table like this and they'll have uh, you know, for instance, they'll have um, a gap between revenue B and revenue C. And I know what they're doing. They're creating this gap. So when someone looks at it visually, it looks more pleasing to the eye because it separates the data out. And you think you're going to be able to review the data easily because you can see a gap between each number. But what's the problem here? Well, if I go back to this and you can see here, it says, C6 minus E6, because there's gaps between the data. Now, when I pull the data across, it doesn't work because now it's pulling across to F6. And you see there's no data in F6. So everything should be compact. Everything should be in, in column format, which allows you to be able to manipulate the data as you start using it and building up more and more complicated formulas. So that's a really useful reference there is to know how to fix cells and how to build up models by having no gaps between columns. So you start dragging across different variances. So that is right off the bat, that's how you start to build up different formulas from adding, subtracting, dividing, and then creating creating some formulas like we've done here that basically show you that you don't need to always go plus this, plus that, plus that. And generally speaking, there's normally a formula reference, something like sum, for different kind of formulas that you want to use. So there is sum, which means to add. And if I go back here and I drag this across to make it look more presentable, so that's um, another formula you can use is something called average. And I'm only going to show you a few of these. So let me just write average here. And you can see average is going to do exactly what you think it would do, which if you highlight two sets of numbers, it's going to show you the average number. 
Another thing you can do is do count. Count is effectively going to show you how many items there are in that list. So it's not going to add up the number, it's going to show you that there are two items in that list. And those are just some simple formulas right off the bat that you might need to use in order to start getting used to using Excel and start analyzing data. And that can be used without doing anything up here within this panel. But what does this panel actually do? Well, the home section of the panel is pretty much used and up to this percentage sign. You see this is just for formatting. Here you can start formatting data by bolding it, or if you wanted to use this little paint symbol you can take a format so that product title there is formatted uh, bold you can press here and then highlight some other area and that will bold another area you obviously have your fonts italics you have the size of the uh, font you have the different formatting areas so you can sort of push something so everything is in the middle of a column instead of the side of a column you have wrap you know, for instance, if all that's just the same revenue, you can merge that area, which I'm not going to do. You can change. So say, for instance, here we have a variance. If I wanted to create a, f a formula which is creating a percentage, for instance, I can then change that by pressing that button into percentage. If you want something to show decimals and have separations, so for instance, if this was 100,000, the data would be shown like this, but you can press that little comma symbol and it's gonna change it into that sort of format. You can change it to show whether you want currencies by clicking on that little area. Conditional formatting is a, is a box that you can use to start setting rules. So what I mean by that is, if I want to say, right, within this, within this section, I want you to highlight if there's a negative number. You can press conditional formatting, highlight cells, and then you can go less than uh, zero, and then it's gonna highlight within the area I selected all the numbers that were less than zero. Here, you're gonna have uh, a filter box. So you can highlight this area here and you can apply a filter. And now you can start filtering data by selecting it. And that's pretty much what the home section is gonna do. It's gonna give you a lot of the functionality to format data and then apply filters. Other areas that you're gonna need to know, probably straight off the bat, is insert. So insert is when you have a uh, you want to add a chart or you want to add a pivot table. Now, what does a pivot table do? Well, I'm going to go across here to this tab and this is going to have a set of data in it. Now, it doesn't matter what this data says, but it's, it has years, months, products, colors, different unit prices, uh, and things like that. And you can select this data and you often have a large set of data that looks like this, you know, lists of data with different years, months, and you can press pivot table. What a pivot table allows you to do is summarize a set load of data. So you can start bringing in into the rows the data and you can see how it's useful because it summarizes all the data from the data sheet and puts it into a nice box so you can start reviewing the set of data. And you see it's very intuitive the way that you review this. You can basically bring in the different category types into columns, into rows, into the values area. And the values area, you always want to say sum because that's going to add up the sum of the different categories. So for instance, if I bring in the revenue, I wanted to add up the sum of all the revenues within 2019 and 2020. And you can see it becomes very good to abbreviate certain data. Uh, another factor you want to consider is if I copy this across, and now I say I want to uh, provide, and I want to delete grand totals. And here I might want to add a graph to be able to review this data because data doesn't normally look very good in a table. It's very hard to review unless you have variance columns. But even then, table data formats aren't ways that people usually review two sets of numbers against each other because it's just harder to review. Normally people want it in a more picture form, which is basically why you use graphs. Now if I pull in, I press on insert, I can add in either by using recommended charts or I can click on the certain line graphs or the bar charts. I can start to bring in graphs that's going to be help that's going to help me review sets of data. So I click on recommended charts and here you can see I have the data that I need in graph format. I can double click on certain axes and it's going to bring up this format axes box. And what does this allow me to do? Well, in simple terms, here I have data that pretty much starts about 4 million. Now, obviously this data on this graph starts at zero and I don't want zero because it's pushing all the data into a very small area. So I can change that axis by going here and I can click on four and I can change the axis whatever I want so that it spreads the data out to compare two lines of data. And that's basically how you add in a graph and that's what the insert section of the panel does. Draw you're not gonna need. Page layout, 
you're not going to need really when you get started. Formulas you're not really going to need when you get started. Data section you probably are going to need. Now if I go back to the data set you can see this here's a large set of data. I can start to apply filters to this by clicking on the filter box which is also in the home panel that we discussed earlier by clicking on that area. So data you're going to use the filters section within this data tab and you can start filtering through large sets of data to start analyzing it if you're not going to use a pivot table. Another thing that is good within this section is here you have a large set of data and maybe I don't want to have to scroll down to see what kind of categories I have. What you can do is if I copy the and paste the data into column K, I can click on this remove duplicates and press OK and there it's going to remove all the duplicates. So I can see within this list of areas that we have three different product types. And that's another useful thing that you can use within the data tab. Another thing you can use within the data tab is if you want to hide a selection of data, you can click on this group button here and it's going to group a selection of data, which then helps you to uh, format the sheet sheets the way you want it to by hiding certain areas. And you can see you can pull it out and pull it back together. Review tab, you're not going to really need. View tab, this is only really good if you want to take off things like grid lines or if you have a large set of data and you want to be able to see what the column headings are as you scroll down a sheet, you can click on the row. So I'm clicking on row two by clicking on this little box here. The same thing can be done by clicking on the column headings. If I click on row two, I can press this freeze panels button. And now if I pull down, you can see I can see the column headings of all my data set as I scroll down the page. So developer, you're not going to use. That's pretty much it for the panel as well. And I would say that that's pretty much your first 10 minutes on Excel. Now I don't know if that was a 10 minute video, it might be longer than that, but that's pretty much what you're going to need to get going. That's how you start manipulating data within Excel. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, smash that like button, check out my other Excel videos. I make Excel videos every Saturday. Useful tips, some of them more advanced, some of them for beginners. Hopefully you find it useful. If you do, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.